that's another challenge, isn't it? Because there's a real dichotomy there of going, how, how am I consistent when everything is changing? How is I, do I, as a leader, present this really stable, consistent, I know what we're doing, we're doing this, let's just get on with it. You know, we're asking our leaders right now to make some very complex decisions with minimal data and then beating the hell out of them when they go, well, yesterday I thought it was this, but now we've got some more data, actually we're going to do this instead. The question is, from Thinking Focus... Hi, I'm Paul from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Rob from Thinking Focus. And the question is, how do you lead out of confusion? The question is from Thinking Focus, a podcast about how we sometimes get in our own way and what we can do about it. What a great question. Because what we've been noticing since March is the role of leadership has been one of being very firm, being very decisive. Um, but I guess part of that is to think about what's actually needed now. And there's two issues, really, that it would be useful, I think, to explore, Paul. And one is around identity as opposed to the other being stability. Um, and I just wondered, you know, to sort of start that off, if leaders need to create a shared, shared identity for the group, their team, what does that look like? Yeah, so I think I think one of the key things for me about leadership, I mean, good leaders... Um, kind of enable their team to feel like they belong. You, you know, they mm-hmm. you, you feel like you're part of it. You belong to something. You're in something. And now that I guess that's a bit easier if you're running a football team and you can put shirts on everybody. But, <laughs> um, but you know what I mean. It's kind of how do we create that identity? Um, and and I think that's really tough right now because the last six months ish. Um, we have fractured people's sense of who they are for very good reasons. But, you know, teams have gone from being a you know, united group of people to, you know, homeworking or furloughed or, you know, um, I was talking to somebody the other day who were bringing people back into the office, but you're assigned to a bubble. So you only work with the same small group of people in the same area. Um, and And suddenly they're seeing, you know, friction between the bubbles because we're creating um, accidental artificial identities of being not, not that I am part of this big picture, but I am part of bubble A or I'm part of bubble B or I'm a Tuesday person or I'm a home worker. Yeah. Um, and, and, it's, and am I allowed to mix with that other bubble or, or do I not? Um, yeah. Am I on the same calls as everybody else or am I not? And, yeah. and there's been a project group that's been set up and I'm not part of that project group, but it's got colleagues in my, of mine that I used to work with. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, the, the example someone gave me the other day was that was a group where, um, you know, you'd got, you know, a technical group and a service group and a sales group um, and they're in a discussion, but they're in bubbles. And then something said is gets said and I have to kind of work out what's my opinion. Where's my allegiance? Is it to my other service colleagues? Am I part of service or is it to my colleagues in bubble A? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and now suddenly I've got this kind of confusion. But but the reality is, from a leadership point of view, the second that debate is happening, surely we've lost because because actually you you don't want you don't want people to be to have an allegiance to service or the bubble. You want to have people to have an allegiance to the bigger picture, the thing we're trying to achieve. Sure. Yeah. Now I, I was speaking to um, a, a client of mine about whew, I don't know four or five weeks into the lockdown arrangements, who actually sort of found themselves as a team leader because they were in a homeworking situation for a group of other people who were on furlough. Um, wow. And the recognition being that those people on furlough are, are sort of, you know, they're not supposed to be working, um, but, you know, we need you to still interact and make sure that everything is working properly. Um, so we're making you a team leader for a whole group of other people who are remote and you don't know them. Wow, that's. I mean, again, that, how do you, how do you then create a shared identity, a shared yeah. cohesive vision for that group? That's really tough. Yeah, but I think I think that's the you know to a certain extent that's the giga leadership right now, which is, and I think it always has been, but even more so right now, is to go. How do I start to manage the group identity? How do I start to to create a, a shared sense of us? Um, in the way that we talk about this, in the way that we talk to each other, um, to to bind people together in a common something, right? And yet, and you have to be, then be so. The requirement is to act in line with expectations, but actually, you may have to create those expectations or make those expectations really, really clear in order for people to act with them in the first place. 
Yes, I think so. And it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not just expectations for me. It's, it, there's, there's the kind of expectations is one side of it, but it's associations on the other side of it. So actually what, what creates us as a group? You know, we've got a shared vision, um, but we've got, you know, other things in common. What are the trappings or um, I think uh, Shen calls them artifacts of culture that are our group? How do I know? How do I know you're one of us, Rob? Okay. How do I know you're in the group with me just from your behavior and from the things you do? Which I guess is why, you know, T-shirts with company names on and stuff like that are, can be really powerful. Uniforms can be really powerful because they're, they're really visual, obvious parts of the identity. So, and, and, and as we sort of introduced alongside this identity thing is the, the you know, need to create stability because if we don't create stability, you know, identity is one thing, but actually providing stability will prevent us from falling into a chaotic working environment where nobody really knows what's going on. Yes. And, and also, you know, think about, think about the groups you've associated with in the past. Think about the, the things that you've done. Would you, would you really want to be in a group that's unstable? You know, would you really want to be in something that feels like it could fall apart any second? Sure. Uh, and yet uh, that feeling is right there because of you know the situation that we have all found ourselves in for the last 6 7 months yeah because the pandemic itself still means lots of change um and whilst maybe with time ticking on we think we're making some sense of that change we still don't really know um and you know there's a real requirement here to focus in on the things that are really staying the same, you know, because not everything has changed. There's lots of change, yes, but what's the same? Yes, and I think I think that's I think particularly at the moment that's one of the things that strikes me is because of the volume of change, and I don't think it's just necessarily how much change, but how much has changed in so many different aspects of our life. You know, some people move house. Sometimes you change jobs. Sometimes you change the way you work. Sometimes you change where you go and shop or, or what you do on a Saturday afternoon. But when before in life have you changed absolutely everything? Yes. Um, so I think that's why it feels so in your face, for want of a better word. Well, but, uh, and, and additionally, some of those changes you listed before, you might have been the instigator of them, the designer of them, the planner Very true, of them. yeah. We are all of us on the receiving end of this one. Yep. You know, so that's what that further creates instability. But like you said before, when you when you put that in the bigger picture, actually, you know, how much has changed? So, I mean, let's take you and I, for example. Um, you know, the work we're doing right now has changed quite dramatically. Yeah, from face-to-face to remote. To remote. But actually, the purpose and our reason for being this this idea of we you know of helping people get out of their own way in the workplace hasn't really changed. Stayed the same, absolutely. C- kind of people we're working with, yes, at the end of a screen now, mm. but they're the same groups of people we were working with this time last year. Yeah, so it, it's you know, and you could go on and go on and go on. You know, we you know the team is the same, the structure's the same, we get paid on the same day. Um, when we're allowed to, we drive the same car, it doesn't, <laughs> just not as much. You know, huge amounts of it is actually quite stable. Um, yeah. and, and therefore, you know, for me, you know, leadership, again, right now, to lead out of confusion, is to create a sense of stability from chaos, is to kind of focus not on, look, everything's changed, but some things have changed in a backdrop of, Actually, what we're trying to do is still the same thing. Yes. Our higher purpose hasn't changed. No. Our, our, our bigger goals haven't changed. Our reason for being here hasn't changed. Which which I think, you know, the, the only things, he says grandly, that would get in the way of that is where demands on those messages have conflicts. So, you know, it would be useful for us just to sort of go through some of the conflicting demands of making both identity and stability work. Yes, Things like agility, things like short-termism, yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about it. Pick up agility. So right. what's what you know? I, I get agility in the right now as a leader. We need to be more agile than ever. We need to to react to things as they happen. We need to make decisions. What what's the conflict there? Well, surely the conflict is that we haven't got the same access that we had before to everybody. 
Yeah. Um, and we all don't necessarily share the same information or interpret the information in the same way. Yes. So so we're, we're trying to be agile. We're trying to react to things as they happen with probably less understanding of what is going on than ever. Yes. So so you want me to be really agile and, and, and make the best decision as the data comes in. And I'm sitting here actually going, I don't want to make any decisions. I don't know. Yes. And, and you know, that, that for me lo- links into sort of short termism because there is a need for a lot of people who need all of the facts, all of the information, um, whether that's new information or existing information, in order to make decisions. Um, and it's like, I need somebody to spell out everything that's going on. And a conflict in demand at the moment is, well, we, we can't really work to those longer timeframes that we had before because we have to be doing things in a more short term way. Um, and we don't have absolute clarity about where we're going to be four months from now, six months from now, a year from now, whereas before we thought we did. Yes. And and you've got to do that against the backdrop of not making it look like you've given up on the bigger picture, because that's what people are brought into in the first place. Mm. So if, if it just looks like you're doing convenient, short-term things, people are going to react to that. That doesn't feel like the part of the group you want to be part of. So okay. how, yeah, you've got to balance that short-termism with the bigger picture, the long-term Maybe. So Maybe goals, yeah. um, again, against the backdrop of, and you don't have anywhere near enough information to do that. Yeah. So that's quite tough. So this, so this means that w- whether we were a good communicator or not before, we have to be super brilliant at communicating now because we have to have clear, consistent communication um, to keep the team on message, linking, as you say, the, the sort of maybe the more short-term goals specifically with what the bigger picture is, but keeping the team on message. That's um, another challenge, isn't it? Because it's a real dichotomy there of going, yeah. how, how am I consistent when everything is changing? How is I, do I, as a leader, present this really stable, consistent, I know what we're doing, we're doing this, let's just get on with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think maybe that's some of the things you see in national governments that people react to, where yeah. they're, you know, they're having to, um, I, I, I saw, a, a, I'm just going on the side here, Rob, but I saw a thing on the news the other day where, they were basically saying to whichever politician was was being interrogated at that point in time, but you keep U-turning. <laughs> and, and the poor politician was sitting there going, you call it U-turns, we call it kind of actually yeah. making the best decision with the data available yeah. when the data changes. And I, and I kind of, you know, and I hate this, I actually felt sorry for the politician, and you know how much <laughs> that frustrates me. Um because he's right, you know, yeah. you're asking these people, you know, we're asking our leaders right now to make some very complex decisions yes. with minimal data and yeah. then beating the hell out of them when they go, well, yesterday I thought it was this, but now we've got some more data, actually we're going to do this instead. Yes, absolutely. And But, you know, a really good example to use because that's somebody, a journalist presumably, using U-turn um, because they've been so used to using U-turn before, but the context is completely different because before it was referred to as a policy change. Now it's just about, well, this is what we feel we need to be doing in this pandemic. And actually, now that we've got some new information, we're changing our mind to say it needs to be done in a different way and, and yes. we need to alter that. But that's a leadership challenge of how if you have to communicate against that backdrop and saying, as, as a leader, I need to be really conscious that the way I present the message, the way I explain the change against the bigger picture and against the identity of the group is really important. Because if I don't, I'm, you know, instead of creating the stability that people around me need, I'm decreasing it. I'm the very reason why people are sitting there going, well, am I, am I part of this group or am I not? Because this group doesn't know what it's doing. Am I, am I better off not identifying with a different group over here that feels a bit safer? Which, which I think plays into the final sort of conflicting demand that, that would be useful to talk about here on this podcast, and that is of, of empathy. Mm. So, you know, it would be very easy for us to just go, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, and forget the human in the middle of it all. So being considerate to the needs of the team, whilst not an easy thing to do, is critical at this sort of stage because of the you know the the main theme of this we're trying to lead out of confusion helping with the identity and shared stability um if we don't consider the needs of the individuals and the team then you know we're we're onto a onto a loser right from the outset 
and and that's a challenge again is from from a leadership perspective of going how do i balance that with the task so this comes back to this thing we we've talked about before on these podcasts of this choice between task and relationship right you know how how do i how do i understand and empathize and and allow you to to be you and to work your own way through this without at the same time lowering the expectation of what we're going to achieve absolutely yeah we still have to do this <laughs> yeah i mean i mean and i guess for some organizations right now more than ever because it's gone from a nice to to a look we just we need to do this because if we don't we're not going to make it through the next three six months um yeah i mean I, and i i so i think you know just sort of rounding back just to some of the things we've talked about leadership right now is really tough because you're asked to do some things that are, you know, on one hand, you've got to be really clear with your communications. On the other hand, you've got to be agile. Finding that balance isn't easy. And, and But the, the kind of core for me is saying, you know, like you were talking about stability. How do we create stability for the people around us as much as we possibly can? And how do we create a shared identity that binds the teams around us not into – the, the tri- typical, you know, sales and service silos or furloughed and working or home working and office working, but into one group achieving one objective. And that, for me, is the way you get out of this confusion by bringing people together as one in a shared identity, in a stable environment to move forward, even if that may be really challenging. A good way to round it out. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Paul. Next time on The Question Is. You know, really, who, who amongst us in the world is doing a job that they're not learning in, that they're not finding out new things in, that things aren't changing in? When you enter parenthood, you really have got imposter syndrome then because <laughs> that is one of the big jobs where you kind of find out really early on you haven't got a clue. Thinking Focus works with teams and business units in organisations around the world helping them achieve breakthroughs by enabling them to think differently. To find out more about our work and how we could help your organization, go to www.thinkingfocus.com.